just now driving out of Asheville. It's October 9th. Um, dropped off a bunch of supplies in Black Mountain this morning at the Silverado Saloon there. And then started driving to three or four different fire departments. Black Mountain Fire Department. Uh, Sonoe Valley, I think. And then went over to Fleming Fire Department. And then Fletching or Fletcher. Uh, I did see FEMA. They were at the Asheville Airport. Big $300,000 truck with a big satellite antenna on it. And that's about it. I didn't, oh, and I did see Red Cross in a white tent with two old ladies in it in lawn chairs drinking water with no supplies around them at all. I did see that. That's all I saw out of those two organizations today. So that's the current situation that is still going on in North Carolina. Meanwhile, we've already had a whole nother major hurricane and there's still people in North Carolina waiting to be saved, waiting for help, waiting for supplies. And yes, FEMA's on the ground, but in many cases, they are far away from the destruction doing diddly squat. In fact, there are people who work with FEMA who have come forward saying, hey, we've been put up in this hotel the entire time. We have not been given a single order and we're sitting here basically doing nothing. You see, some people work at places like FEMA because they actually want to help. You know, when I criticize FEMA, I want you to understand that it's mainly a criticism of the overall organization. It's not a criticism of every single person working there because some of these people are doing their jobs. Some of these people do want to help, but overall, they're not doing what they should be doing. And that goes for other agencies and other people who are in the area as well, so-called helping. But right now, the volunteers still are doing the brunt of the work. People who, out of the kindness of their heart, are coming in with supplies and stuff, are doing the brunt of the work. Meanwhile, the main thing FEMA is doing right now is basically trying to regulate everyone else who is out there helping. And listen, I want you all to look at the response to Hurricane Helene in North Carolina and then look at the response to Hurricane Milton in Florida. It's like night and day. It's like night and day. I mean, I am glad that Ron DeSantis is able to handle these situations better than, I guess, the people up in North Carolina. And listen, I know a lot of people hate Ron DeSantis on both sides. Democrats, Republicans, I don't care. Take politics out of it for a moment. He did a great job at having the these areas prepared. There were landfills and dumps that were trying to block people from bringing in the debris from Hurricane Helene. And he brought the cops and snapped, I mean, cut through bolts and opened up these gates and allowed people to start bringing in trash, dump truck after dump truck after dump truck, trying to clear up a lot of the debris. Um, obviously, there was a massive evacuation. And when you look at today and how first responders are on the ground helping and doing their jobs, it's a lot different than what we saw with Hurricane Helene in North Carolina. Now, listen, I'm not saying things aren't going to go wrong. I'm not saying that everything is perfect. And if we find out about some shady stuff that's going on in Florida with the response to this hurricane, you already know we're going to be talking about it on this channel. But as of right now, Everything was just handled so much better. Like, uh, just leaps and bounds so much better. Now, of course, some of that is because Florida's just more prepared for these type of events. Yeah, but it, it's just a big difference. But anyways, now in North Carolina, there's a certain criminal element that is being introduced to the chaos because now people from all over are trying to come to these areas to exploit the situation. Um, looters are coming. And I'm not talking about your average crackhead riding a bike trying to break into stuff or anything like that. I'm saying there's people coming into these areas with moving trucks. And they're looting. 
And there's a lot of there's been a lot of run-ins from what I've heard with looters doing these things and they're pulling the, um certain schemes and stuff in these areas and they're filling truckloads. I mean truckloads of stuff and trying to haul it out of there. So let's go ahead. I want to roll this clip so you can hear it from someone who's experienced this and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Are people getting sketchy out there now? Yeah, they are. We're on day six, y'all, with no power. It's the end of day six, no power. So I got a phone call uh, from one of my neighbors down the road, and somebody was casing his place, parked out in front of his house, had a Penske truck. His wife went out to talk to the fellow and said, oh, I'm just waiting on another driver to come drop off your package. She said, we don't have a package coming. Her husband walks out. He's got a sidearm on him and the truck takes off coming down towards where I live. So he calls me up, he says, you see that truck? I said, nope, I ain't seen it. So I said, I'll meet you halfway. So I jump on my four wheeler and I start hauling butt. I see the truck. Well, he got out of there in a hurry y'all, but y'all need to be prepared because people are now starting to look for things that don't belong to them. Stay safe, everyone. Keep your eyes peeled. Protect your neighbors. Good luck, y'all. So I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot of stories like this one over the coming days and weeks. And not just in North Carolina. It's going to be going on in Florida as well, for sure. Even though I think the people who do this in Florida, they'll definitely deal with harsher consequences than the people who do this in North Carolina. But my main takeaway from this I mean, obviously, it's disgusting and it's already a chaotic situation. The last thing you want to have to deal with is people looting your homes and stuff. But my main takeaway from this is that some of these areas that are experiencing these issues, these are areas where certain government agencies won't even go into because they say it's too dangerous. A lot of these areas have roadblocks. So FEMA can't come in and access the damage or they can't come in and set up supply drop zones in these areas, but the looters can make it down the road just fine. You know what I mean? It's like, why are the looters able to make it to these ravaged areas, but our own government can't? You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure the, loot the looters don't have that much at their disposal, Meanwhile, the U.S. government has literally any and everything you could possibly imagine, but they're like, hey, we don't want to drive down that street. We don't want to go here. Oh, but the looters are just with their Penske trucks, <laughs> moving trucks and stuff, just going wherever. Wild, wild. But like I said, we'll hear more about this, I'm sure. But for now, let me know your thoughts about all of this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.